In this video I demonstrate the use of the hash table collection and I strongly recommend that you take a look at the uh, intro to collections video 2030 for more information about the hash table collection and all the collections that implement the iDictionary interface. To demonstrate the use of the hash table I've created a Visual Basic console application called hash table VB and I've pasted some code into it already. At the very bottom you'll notice uh, if you're familiar with uh, the rest of the videos in the series uh, the car class I've left in the implementation of iComparable in the car class although we won't need it for this video. At the very top I just have some notes about uh, first of all the hash table and remember from our introductory video on collections that the hash table is really the powerhouse. It has uh, the best internal implementation of the iDictionary for large groups of items within your collection. So uh, if you have more than 10, you definitely want to use the hash table. Just to review, again, our, the hash table basically sets up a series of buckets and so when we get to load factor, um, which is one of the overloaded constructors, uh, whenever you create a hash table, you're going to be asked to specify the ratio of elements to buckets. And by default, I believe it's 1.0. Uh, you can change this in order to, to optimize the use of the, uh, the buckets, make the buckets smaller. But I'll warn you that even though you have this kind of control that .NET manages this internally and so unless you get into a situation where you need to uh, tweak some performance out of your hash table and you're going to do some very calculated measurements uh, I would recommend not touching that. But at any rate let's take a look at some of the constructors for the hash table. Um, they all pretty much, uh, there's 10 uh, different versions of it and they range from just the new to passing in the capacity. And the capacity is the maximum number, of maximum number of elements that you should allow. You can also add in the fill factor that we just talked about a moment ago. Um, also there is this idea of the hash code provider and as I've noted in the comments that you can create your own custom object that implements uh, the interface of the hashing process. So if you don't like the way that .NET implemented hashing or more specifically if you want to create a uh, different type of hashing and for your own custom objects you can implement this iHash code provider interface and do it yourself but I'll warn you that that's pretty advanced stuff and we're not going to cover it probably ever in this series of videos. Um, then Finally, there's another uh, that you can't see because it's off to the right-hand side of the screen, uh, an interface that you can pass in an instance of uh, the iComparer, and basically this is uh, gives you the ability to implement your own object that knows how to evaluate two different types of, uh, types of objects or sealed objects, and we'll talk about that in a future video. But for our purposes, we're just going to use the first constructor which is just the hash table with no input parameters. What I've done in the rest of this is very simple, just created five car objects and added them to our cars collection. Uh, I will add this little note underneath of it that um, let me add one more thing that let's go ahead and just loop through them and show uh, each of the keys of course, we've already talked about the, the key collection in the previous video. And what I do want you to note, though, is I've added this little section, this little comment, is that we're going to take a look at the result. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here and hit F5. Let's go ahead and take a look at our console window. Do you notice anything about the results here? Take a look. We're going to uh, use a our little outliner tool and we're going to start here and notice how they're organized. I keep on getting bigger and bigger with my square and this should give us a little bit of a clue how the hash table works. Uh, we noted in the intro video how they basically for string objects take all the values together and, um, and maybe they're ASCII equivalents and add them together and it gives you a number. That number gets placed in a bucket so that when you go to look for uh, the Grand Voyager key 
it knows what bucket generally to look in because everything that when you add up Grand Voyager, all the values, it can can jump all the other buckets that it knows don't add up to Grand Voyager. Now this hash seems to work for, or that theory about the hash seems to work for um, uh, this simple case of using strings as the keys. It may not always be true, especially when you're using your own custom implementation of the hash evaluator. So let's go ahead and get back to our IDE and just stop this. And I'll paste in some more code that should look very familiar. Um, if you went through the previous video on the uh, list collection, or re list dictionary rather, I'm sorry. So let's go ahead and save that and uh, run it again. Take a look at the values that come up. Whoops. Here we go. In this first case, we simply loop through all the values that are inside of uh, our hash table. Here we access a specific element of our hash table using its key and return its properties and print them out. But the hash table does have some additional functionality that we didn't see in the list dictionary. So let's take a look at that for a moment. Go ahead and paste in some more code here. The first one is the use of the contains key. We can pass in a key name and it'll tell us true or false. As you can see here, I just used the true string of uh, the contains key method. And I could just have returned two string just as easily, but true string allows us to return the string value of true or false. So it allows us to take a look at for a specific key, geo, and does it exist? It works exactly the same as the contain statement. So we pass in geo to that. We should see the exact same values. And then I use the contains value method of the hash table and pass in an instance of one of our car objects. And we see if that one exists within our collection. Let's go ahead and save it and build it. And then I'm going to bring up this window and run it. And notice that um, we get the contains the geo prism true contains the geo prism still does true those are the two different ways of doing it exactly the same and then finally contains car four true and then finally I have here two methods that I don't want to get into right now, um, but they speak to the ability to serialize your hash table um, in a format uh, that's specific to your objects that are stored within the hash table, and use the get object data and the on to serialization event uh, in order to accomplish that. And that'll come up in a new video called Serializing a Hash Table in the Future. So I hope this uh, video was beneficial, that it helped you see a little bit of the differences between the uh, list dictionary and the hash table, and uh, why you'd want to use uh, each one of them. Thank you.